Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Quest of Dungeons for the Nintendo Switch. And if you're like one of so many gamers out there that's probably never even heard of this title, but you have heard of games like Cadence of Hyrule, or maybe you've seen our review for Crypt of the Necrodancer, you might already have a pretty good idea of how this game works. But even though Quest of Dungeons is yet another roguelike dungeon crawler, it's not just another roguelike dungeon crawler. Staying true to the SNES-style 16-bit gaming era, Quest of Dungeons doesn't exactly have a big story, but it is a pretty comical way to start the game. More or less, you'll choose one of four different types of heroes, whether reliant on magic or brute force, closer ranged combat. And after choosing one of your heroes, you'll be given the backstory that some evil overlord has basically banished light from the world and imprisoned it in the Lamp of Light. And this lamp has been hidden away at the bottom floor of a dungeon that these four heroes have taken upon themselves to go and get it back. However, just before assaulting the dungeon, you've been pretty much outvoted by the rest of your party and told that you'll be going in alone. And it's pretty much after this judicious round of not it that you'll be diving into your first campaign in your randomly generated dungeon. As is to be expected by the roguelike and dungeon crawler genres, though, every iteration of the game will be randomly generated with randomly placed mobs, chests, quests, and even bosses. And every death in the game does mean you'll be starting completely over from scratch. But as I mentioned earlier, though some players may not have ever experienced a universal turn-based dynamic, if you are familiar with games like Cadence of Hyrule or Crypt of the Necrodancer, the method by which you'll be expected to engage with enemy combat and navigate your way through this dungeon is surprisingly simple, but also surprisingly engaging. More or less, every single step taken in the game, every item used, every spell cast, and every chest opened equals one turn. But this doesn't just mean one turn for the player, it's basically one turn for everything in the game. And this basically means that every step you take getting closer and closer to your goal means it's another step every enemy in the game is taking getting closer and closer to you. And though it might take a little bit of time to figure out the specifics of how to engage in combat with whatever hero you may have selected, figuring out the pace of the game and also how to engage with different types of enemies is going to be one thing that's really going to work to save your life. You can, of course, just blaze through the game and try and find stairwell after stairwell to get to that in-game boss, but hastily stumbling into a room could easily cause you to get overtaken and subsequently sacrifice every item and every point of experience you've gained so far in the game. But one of the cool things about Quest of Dungeons that does set it apart from some of the typical roguelike dungeon crawlers is actually its RPG element. In addition to its strategic movement systems, Quest of Dungeons does actually provide the player with an RPG-style leveling system as well as an expansive item inventory. And whether it's from a lucky random drop from a mob or a boss, or from an item chest or even purchased from the shop, you'll be able to outfit your character with multiple pieces of equipment to really put you on that cutting edge to help you get further and further in the game. But not only is there a leveling system and usable items and equipment to consider, but you can also pick up new skills and abilities and occasionally even find random quests. These quests will give you a bit of a description about an enemy and a bit of a description about its location and give you an opportunity to challenge a new semi-randomized mid-boss. And this actually does bring us to one of the finer points of the RPG system and that's the fact that you can actually grind for level. You can of course totally blaze through the game in about a half hour from beginning to end or you can take it slowly and carefully and kill every boss, every minion, and every quest boss and overlevel yourself so much that the end of the game is pretty much a piece of cake. This will of course take more time and it's probably not to every player's fancy but being more a fan of RPGs I actually really enjoyed that aspect. But while this actually sounds all well and good so far, after you manage to complete the game the first time you open up a new chapter of the game. Again, the Overlord has captured and rehidden the light of the world in the Light Lantern, and again, it will be your job as a solo hero to navigate a deep dark dungeon to find it. But in every new iteration of the game's multiple chapters, the environments and sceneries will be just a bit different, and there will be new mobs and bosses to encounter. Additionally, after beating the game on your first pass, you will unlock a new playable character, and I thought it was a pretty great surprise, so I'm not going to tell you who it is. But moving away from the actual gameplay and some of the mechanics, the graphics are obviously done in a full 16-bit render and done really well. And while the music definitely fits a 16-bit SNES era dungeon crawler, it's not anything really of note, but it definitely doesn't distract from the gameplay at all. 
Overall, though, I'd really have to say that I completely enjoyed my time with Quest of Dungeons, and I can totally see why the fans who suggested I review this game told me that they have hundreds of hours dumped into it. It's a game that you can sit down with for 5 or 10 minutes, or you could play it for hours and hours on end. Every single game is different, not only because of the roguelike random generation element, but also because you can play the game in a myriad of different ways. You can choose to take quests or not take quests, you can choose to take warp gates and run away from bosses, or you can choose to make yourself into an OP tank and kill everything that gets in your way. You can choose to glide by by the skin of your teeth, or you can choose to power level and dominate everything. And with chapter after chapter opening up and creating more and more intense challenges, there really is an incredible amount of replayability, not even noting the online leaderboards. So regardless of if you're a fan of roguelike games with their random generation or not, if you're a fan of dungeon crawlers, especially due to that RPG element, this is probably a game you're going to want to keep on your radar. It's definitely worth the price, especially the sale price, and in all honesty, it's yet another one of those eShop gems that really didn't get enough media attention. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Quest of Dungeons now on the Nintendo Switch, so if you enjoyed the review, and especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw me a like or a comment to show your support. And don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. There are literally new and unique indies coming out every single day, so there's always going to be some new game to find out about right here. But if you want to get more involved with the channel, just see what I'm up to, or maybe even talk to some of your fellow gamers out there, you can click any of the links in the bottom right corner of our channel's banner for Instagram, Twitter, Discord, or even become a Patreon supporter. But anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.